Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and yes, you read the title right, you can now run PlayStation 4 games on your PC. Now I'm going to start the video off by telling you that this is not going to be any of those like joke videos, okay? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you can run like full PlayStation 4 games at 100% on a PC. You can't, okay? This is like the earliest proof of concept. This is like pre-puberty levels, okay, of emulation. Now to understand, if you go on Google right now, YouTube, you can look up PS4 emulator and you'll find a bunch of people who are like spider-man is 60 frame per second 4k such bs this is a lie okay you want to know why it's a lie let me click on it and show you all right yeah this is not running the game at 60 frames per second not only do they have likes and dislikes disabled but uh if we could emulate spider-man this good all right, I wouldn't even be bothering to make this video. We are not getting this close performance. These are BS metrics. We're not even here. This is all a scam. To understand, we are just getting PlayStation 3 emulation, okay? We are just getting Metal Gear Solid 4 running playable. We are just getting Red Dead Redemption to run properly on emulators. And that requires some of the best PC hardware you can find, all right? So unless you have thousand plus dollar computers, you ain't getting good emulation, especially not that Spider-Man footage we just saw. So in the last couple like days, uh, Spine, which is a PlayStation 4 emulator, has sort of released another build, a build that you can download right now and run for yourself. Now, to understand, there are a couple PlayStation 4 emulators on the market. There's Orbital, which is very early, all right? I think it uses, like, QEMU, which is the same tech I use to power my virtual machine computers. And uh, there's also GPCS4, which is running on Windows. It runs, like, two games. Uh, very slow, but it runs two games, as far as I know. And now, today we're looking at Spine, which is a Linux exclusive emulator. Now, this required me to go down and download a few things. This was not an easy endeavor to get going. So to understand, to use this emulator, you do, in fact, need a PlayStation 4. And not just a PlayStation 4, a hacked PlayStation 4. Now, if you remember back to when I ran Halo uh, Master Chief Collection on a PlayStation 4, I'm using that same hacked PS4. I updated it to version 7.55, which is like the highest you can get for a hacked system. And uh, then I hacked it. I connected it to my computer via FTP, so I downloaded the operating system files off of the PlayStation 4, and I dug them in, and I'm using the actual decrypted operating system, the firmware of the PS4, in order to actually run this emulator. As far as games go, I had to buy, install games, back them up through a USB flash drive, put them on a computer, decrypt them, and then get them ready to get them ready to actually emulate. So it wasn't a completely easy affair by any chance. Now to understand, I've got a few games here, the actual emulator called Spine, and everything ready to go. Now, in this case, when I backed up games, I backed up games like PT, which is the Silent Hill demo that basically is delisted everywhere. Absolutely would be perfect for an emulator like this when we go to preserving it. I also backed up Sonic Mania, because Sonic Mania is one of those games that is confirmed to work, as far, or playable in-game. And then I also backed up Watch Dogs, because I heard this game can actually be ran somewhat. And I want to show you how things are run. Now, as you can imagine, these are big files. So we're talking, like, Watch Dogs is 20 gigabytes when you back it up off of, like, everything. Sonic Mania right here is somewhere around the ballpark of 312 megabytes. And Shovel Knight is, like, half of that. So this is what we're looking at regarding PlayStation 4. I guess you could say ROMs in this case, right? Now, to open up Spine, what's interesting is in this firmware folder, this is where I backed up the PlayStation 5, or sorry, PlayStation 4 firmware files. So as you can see, the two folders I copied off of the PlayStation 4 hard drive was pre-inst and system. In total combined, these are like 335 megabyte files. You're going to need these for the emulator to function because in order for it to function, it's going to need the PlayStation 4 firmware, right? Now, what they also provided with this entire list was a 
compatibility sheet. Now, this is a total amount of games that I guess have been tested and attempted to run. So in some cases, you can see how games like A Plague's Tale Innocence are giving you nothing, meaning this game does not function under this emulator. Now, if you went up and Googled, say, God of War or searched it in this field, you would find out God of War gives you nothing. Grand Theft Auto V boots into the introduction. So I assume you see the Rockstar logo, then Game Crash. Now, Sonic Mania, on the other hand, in this case, is actually going in-game. So let me show you how this thing works. This is a real wild mind blower. Now, one of the easiest ways to do it is to drag the spine executable file after you make it executable, drag it into the good old terminal so it gets registered, and then you want to drag your Sonic Mania eboot. And this is what's going to blow your mind. This is a PS4 game actually running underneath a computer. So this is like very early stages. Bam, you hit enter and it just highlight and hijacks. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Sega, dude. God damn. And that runs really good. According to my actual system right now, I am probably using 7% of the CPU. I am actually using half a gigabyte of RAM. Now, when we're starting this up to prove that this is an actual, you know, sort of game, let's actually go past and get into the main menu. So it's giving me this sort of like auto save functionality. Circle for back, X for confirm. Now the colors are all over the place and this is because we are very early into PlayStation 4 emulation. The fact that this is even running like this is already impressive. So we're gonna hit mania mode and it already has my save file right here. So hit enter, let's get going dude. Green Hill Zone, baby. That runs, dude. It's running a bit fast, no less. It's running pretty fast actually. But this is Sonic Mania. PS4 version currently running on a fucking PC, dude. This is... Now, listen, I know there's probably some people out there like, this isn't that fucking impressive. Dude, this is impressive to me. This is the... F this is like the first entry, okay? Because five years from now, if the progress on this is insane, we're probably going to be emulating things like God of War at some point, okay? Five years is pretty early, okay? Maybe like six, seven years, all right? It takes a while for these things to brew up. Now, of course, that's a 2D game. Now, I want you to understand, there, this isn't a case where like, oh, that's a 2D game, it's gonna be easy to run. Not every 2D game will run. The reality of it is, is that since this is the initial beginning, getting 2D games to run is a significantly easier task than starting to understand how to render the 3D environments of the PS4. Because in order to run emulation, in order to run accurate emulation, you need to be able to emulate every facet. So we're talking the CPU and the GPU in some capacity. Now, I imagine the performance that I'm getting in this case and why we're delving into Linux is that we're sort of looking at a different fundamental way to emulate these systems. Now, if you look at a lot of older systems, uh, typically there are different architectures compared to what we have on PCs. When the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One launched, they were shipping with x86-64 architecture. So it's the same CPU architecture in your actual computer right now. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to get a one-to-one -one running. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the methods to achieve emulation are sort of shifting, all right? And this is why, in some cases, Sonic Mania was running even faster than expected without using too much of my CPU. So it seems like we're actually relying on virtualization or low-level virtualization to sort of achieve this method, which is actually fucking cool. So, all right, that was Sonic Mania. I want to try Shovel Knight a little bit. So here's Shovel Shovel Knight ready to go. Okay, so here's the here's the full game. All right, we're just gonna run this underneath the emulators. We've got sound too. All right, so here we go. Yacht Games. Now, if you look at the cross save here, it'll tell you obtaining cloud information. I can upload. I can't download anything because I can't connect the PlayStation Network. Now, if we go to like start game, it does keep my save file, so it does have save functionality. That is good. Now, if I hit enter over here. You'll notice that, ah, this is the errors, right? So in a game, even if it's 2D, you see how we have like these squares around like a lot of these objects? That's because this is the beginning of like emulation, okay? You're still gonna have those graphical issues. Now, if we press any button, you can see how it asks press options to skip. That's a PlayStation control prompt, dude. Now, this doesn't have controller support, so you actually need to be using your keyboard. And the games are kind of playable. Remember, this is like trying to get it running, okay? All of that controller shit, that's for later. But this is Shovel Knight running. And if you notice something, this is the game running pretty perfectly. Like, as far as frame rates are going, it's pretty good. 
the HUD definitely isn't loading in, and the transparencies around, like, you see how the grass here? The night is completely, like, like, there is no transparency. That graphical effect isn't working. But the rest of the game seems to be working fine, okay? Now, again, that doesn't mean, like, by level 3, I won't crash. This is, like, playable up till now. But you can see, like, Shovel Knight's working pretty good. Oh, here we go. Bam, dude. I still got it on a keyboard, man. This is like... So, again, I have to say, like, for some people, this might not seem crazy. But for somebody like me, this is like the very early stages of emulation. And what's interesting is this is an emulator that's running at this speed, and it's actually completely Linux exclusive. So I don't know if the developer for this, who's by the way developing it privately, is ever going to consider making this like a Windows built in. Maybe it might not be for Windows. Now Watch Dogs, for those of you who don't remember, was a like PlayStation 4 launch title. Uh, pretty good game if you've never played it. But Watch Dogs is a game that, frankly, is a bit more graphically demanding than Shovel Knight and Sonic Mania. Uh, and the fact that it has a 3D world to render. So let's try running that and seeing where the emulation sort of stops. Now, you get this little flash of yellow for some reason. And I think the heavier the game gets, the longer it takes to initialize. This is the one game where it's actually using like 4 gigs. So it actually loaded up. It loaded up the introduction screen. So you got the Ubisoft logo, which, cool enough. Uh, you've got the Watch Dogs logo. Now, half of it's cut off, dude. Like, it's diagonally cut off. So there's definitely a graphical effect that's missing. And the emulator crashed. The emulator crashed. <laughs> that's the end of Watch Dogs. It just crashes and freezes. But you definitely get to the title screen. Which, let me tell you, that's better than nothing. But this is a YouTuber known as Foas who's also been testing this entire situation. This is coming out from yesterday, and he showed Persona 5 Royal in-game. Now, up until this point, we are able to preserve and play Persona 5 PS3 edition on our PCS3, and it works really well. But Persona 5 Royale is an update to an amazing game, and it's only on PS4. So until we create this emulator, that game is not going to be preserved, and I'll get to that in a bit. But look at this guy, okay? So he's on the Thieves Guild, skipping a bunch of things. The introduction works relatively well. The actual video works relatively well. But what's crazy is the actual game you can kind of play. So as you can see right over here, we're in the introduction area, the casino, all right, where you start the game off. And you can see that the actual, like, you can move the player around. Now, you can't see Joker or anything, but this is the casino section of the game. It's got this red-green tinge to it, which looks kind of cool. But the game is, it's in-game, all right? It's, we're rendering a 3D PS4 game right now. And of course, performance-wise, it's a lot better than I expected. Now, of course, when the graphics are going to be fixed and everything's going to be fixed rendering, it's going to be more computationally expensive. But he's in a battle right now. It might be a black screen, but this is a battle going on. A controllable battle, no less. So, yeah, I, I have to say what we've seen so far is impressive. Now, if you look at the specs over here, dude's got like 16 gigs of RAM, a 3070, and a Ryzen 5 5600X. A pretty good system by my imagination. So... Honestly, this is the very first step, okay? This is like, again, I'm telling you, this is like just entering. So we're already here. I have to imagine in five or six years, if this goes open source, it might blow up and we might be running games, you know, actual PS4 exclusives on our PCs, preserved no less. Now, there's not much to go off beyond this other than this is an emulator that shows a lot of promise. But to understand, I'm one of the... I, listen, I'm a game preservationist. I have said this countless times. When it comes to me playing PC games, I'm in the PC world mostly for the emulators at this point. I play a lot of older retro games blown up to 4K on my gaming PC. Now, to me, emulation is important because it preserves our gaming history, okay? Let me give you a good example. Games like Red Dead Redemption. Now, we all like Red Dead Redemption 2. It's a solid single-player game. Now, it's a prequel to the original Red Dead Redemption, a game that isn't really being preserved. Now, Microsoft, if you have an Xbox One, you can download it from their servers if you have the original disc. But that's not preservation. 
because that means you have to rely on Microsoft to constantly preserve Red Dead Redemption for every generation of Xbox coming forward. Sony does not care about backwards compatibility. There is no way to run PS3 games on the PS4 or the PS5. Unless you pay for PlayStation Now, which is streaming the game from their servers, which, that's not preservation either. All we can hope for is the emulator community. So let's say you wanted to play Red Dead Redemption and preserve it on the PC. Well, thankfully, you have options like RPCS3 to emulate the game on the PS the PS3 version on your PC. You can use something like Xenia and emulate it, the Xbox 360 version on the PC. Games like Metal Gear Solid 4, an amazing PlayStation 3 game, is preserved thanks to RPCS3. So Again, I have to remind you that play, emulation is the ultimate form of preserving a lot of these massive older games. Now, there's no doubt in my mind the PS4 is a system with amazing games. Persona 5 Royale is one such game. If this emulator sparks up, we can preserve Persona 5 Royale for like the generations that come 10, 20 years down the road. You might be wondering who's going to play a game 10, 20 years down the road. Well, you'd have to imagine there are people right now playing games like Persona 3, Persona 4, Grand Theft Auto Vice City. A lot of these timeless classic games that I'm sure are going to be the pillars of gaming to the ends of the days, okay? So that's why emulation is important. And that's why I'm really excited about this kind of an emulator kicking off and the various other projects that are following behind. Ladies and gentlemen, this might seem like a boring video to some, but my eyes spark up when I see this kind of progress. To me, this is witnessing history on the ground floor, because four or five years from now, if I'm still doing YouTube, I'm definitely hoping to make a video about showing you guys how we're emulating games like Last of Us 2 or games like God of War on an actual PC. Because remember, those games aren't just games. One point, all these systems will die. The PS4s of the world will die. The PS5s of the world will die. What won't die is emulators and PC hardware. And this is the only way to preserve games. So ladies and gentlemen, here's to preserving games. Shoot yourself some goddamn G Fuel. This is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.